Here's the second half of the piece. Here's the double bar, mm -hmm. and here's the final bar. And I'm going to be a cursor. And as you're playing, I'm moving through the space that stands for that amount of time. Mm -hmm. when, when you're dealing with relationships like between this and that, things that are separated that are outside of near-term memory, they tend to get less temporal in nature and more spatial in nature. But in order to have a consistent architecture from here all the way to there, yeah. you need to know, now I'm here, got 90% left. Now I'm here, yeah. now I've got 80% left. Now I'm here. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, it's probably better if I, oh, oh I'll do it here. Yeah, so I always want to know where I am in all of this. Oh, we we got to fix that. spell this one out for you so you can play it at the piano. Oh. It's G flat 2, C3, E flat 3, A flat 3, C4, E flat 4, and A flat 4. Yeah. But you can do this at home, this idea of cursoring your way through. Yeah. That, what it does, it's the same psychology of understatement as thinking that you're just a part of a chord and not the whole thing. You're just the iron of filing, obeying the will of the harmony. Mm -hmm. When you do this, it it's, has a similar humbling effect. It makes no one measure that importance. Right. Each measure is part of a process. And the danger is if you let out all the stops on one place, you get trapped in time. Oh, okay. And you lose your, your perspective on the piece. Time is the greatest thing about music and the most treacherous thing about music. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 